What's good, Josh? Your boy Ross back at again with another video. So we're gonna check out WWE videos you are not supposed to see. This should be an interesting one by none other than Tap Out Corner. Maybe there's some things we're not have, supposed to have seen air on television, but we're gonna check this out. Uh, you guys have been showing so much love and support on the channel. I really do appreciate you guys, and I'm looking forward to this video. Let's keep let's keep the support going. Let's keep the the momentum going on the channel, man. We're almost at 100k. Let's do the damn thing, man. WWE produces a ton of content that they are more than happy to show you. However, the videos we're about to see are the ones that WWE never intended you to watch. After WWE had finished filming an episode of SmackDown in 2014, Michael Cole was chatting with his boss, Vince McMahon, through their headsets about some talking points. The WWE Network had just launched, so the company really wanted to promote it. Unfortunately, since Michael Cole was a commentator, he was the one who had to constantly plug the network, much to the fans' annoyance. In some uh -huh. leaked audio, you can hear Michael Cole getting upset set in talking back to McMahon. Do you want me to say that every time? Because I said the <laughs> load of times. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. So you want yes, sir. Yep. Okay, I've got it, sir. I just didn't know if you want me to hit it every time, but I'll do that from now on. Okay, you got it. Thank you. Knowing the story. Wow. <laughs> this is why I do feel like Michael Cole is doing some of his best work. Because I'm, I'm pretty sure Triple H is not just barreling his you know his request in michael cole's he uh headset all the time you know what i'm saying and that's what vince would do if he wanted you to say something 20 to 30 times within the show you basically had to do it so it's crazy hearing michael cole get frustrated and he's like nah promote the wwe network do it now michael cole or I'll fire your ass I can I can only imagine that's how it went. That's all you hear was yes yes sir. All right, I'll do it sir. That's crazy. Stories of how angry Vince McMahon can get. I would love to know what McMahon said to Michael Cole after that comment. Facts. Originally, Dean Ambrose was not supposed to be part of the Shield. Instead, WWE planned on having Ambrose make his main roster debut by himself and feud with Mick Foley. They actually began a storyline, but it didn't start on TV. During the weekend of WrestleMania 28 mm. in 2012, Mick Foley was at a hotel meeting with fans. Dean Ambrose Ambrose, who was wrestling for WWE's development company, FCW at this time, approached Foley and said Mick had to be held responsible. He ruined a generation and responsible for a lot of his wrongs. And he's very accountable. All the 14-year-old kids ruin their lives. Ruin their name one, on name one 14-year-old kid. I got some real quick proof? and I made it, but I, a lot of my friends didn't. A lot of my friends didn't. Your friends are what, are they dead? When you got off scot you need to be held accountable. I don't Security eventually kicked Ambrose out of the building, but this looked like a real altercation wow. between Dean and Foley. Of course, the whole thing was planned. Yeah. It was supposed to set up a rivalry that would see Ambrose make his main roster debut. Due to Foley's health, though, the hardcore icon wasn't allowed to wrestle, so the rivalry got scrapped, and Ambrose eventually joined Seth Rollins and Roman Reigns as the Shield. Speaking of the Shield... And that's that's a crazy situation. We could have got Ambrose as a solo act. Granted, I think he works better in the Shield. The Shield coming together, just them three, literally worked out perfect for them, you know? So, uh, I'm actually kind of glad it didn't pan out, but it would have been interesting to see Dean Ambrose really go against the hardcore legend himself, Mick Foley, in a segment or or in a, a program. I think that would have been pretty interesting to see, but... I'm glad things worked out the way they did. While their entrance was simple, it was pretty cool. Seth, Dean, and Roman would enter through the crowd rather than the entrance ramp like all the other wrestlers. Yep. However, the part you never saw was what was going on right before they walked out. The shield would be led by a group of security guards to the spot where they were going to walk out of. There would also be a WWE production member or two who was there to give them last minute instructions if needed. Mm -hmm. As for the shield themselves, all three members usually had a water bottle that they would normally pour on their heads right before their music hit. This is why they were almost always wet before they had done mm -hmm. anything. A lot of times, if there's something WWE doesn't want you to see, they'll do it during a commercial break. However, thanks to smartphones, this yeah. doesn't work so well anymore. During commercial breaks, WWE's production crew will often do things like change the ring mat if they Damn, look how quick they're doing it. decorations set up for an upcoming segment on the show, and other things like that. However, there was one commercial break incident that basically ruined wrestling. The March 13th, 2020 SmackDown uh, was the beginning of the pandemic I I know which WWE segment he's talking about. From inside their performance center with no fans in attendance. One of the matches on the show was yep. a women's the women's match, but they forgot to cut the camera. So you can see them when they went, you know, the ref tells them, yeah, we're on, we're on commercial break. So they're just, everybody's just sitting in the ring, chilling. 
and the camera was still on. So I, I, I do remember that one tag team match. Other than the lack of a crowd, the match started off normally. After a bit, the show went to a commercial break. However, there was a technical glitch for some viewers, and the cameras went back to the show too early. Because they thought nobody was watching, the wrestlers broke character and stopped wrestling each other. It was something you never thought would happen, yep. but there it was. Eventually, once the commercial break officially ended, the women got back into character and returned to wrestling. <laughs> We've all seen the footage of Brock Lesnar's infamous WrestleMania 19 match against Kurt Angle. Uh -huh. To end the fight, Lesnar got on the top rope and attempted to hit a shooting star oh press. Gosh. After nearly killing himself, Lesnar would never attempt that or any high-risk move again. That's probably a good thing. Yeah. But have you ever seen Brock Lesnar hit the shooting star press correctly? Before making his official WWE debut, Lesnar competed in dark matches, which were filmed but never intended to be seen by anyone oh, besides backstage personnel. Wow. During some of Lesnar's earliest WWE matches, he actually broke out the shooting star press wow. and nailed it perfectly. Wow. Wow. Of course, it helped that he hadn't been wrestling an Olympic gold medalist before trying to perform the high-risk move. During a different dark match, Brock used a drop kick, another move that Brock rarely, if ever, used on TV. That's also, crazy. before he started using the F5, Lesnar's finisher was a running power slam. Oh. Years later, Braun Strowman used this move as his finisher. Around the same time that Brock Lesnar was competing in dark matches, I'm match, so glad it wasn't a running power slam. I ain't gonna lie to you, that F5 is fucking sick. I know Dub would not be happy about me saying this but the f5 that's a sick ass finisher that shit looks like it could that shit looks like it hurt you just throwing someone <laughs> like a goddamn pizza dough and just wherever they land they land matches, so was Randy Orton. By watching these matches, you can see that Orton's moveset was much more versatile than what he would eventually sell. Oh, wow. With. Part of the reason for that is that Randy Orton, like almost all wrestlers, was experimenting with different moves to see what worked best. Something else that's crazy to see in these matches is Randy Orton making his entrance on the original SmackDown set with the oval Titantron in the corner. By the time Randy Orton made his official WWE debut in 2002, SmackDown had switched over oh, to the Oh, yeah. Set. So it's bizarre seeing Randy Orton in this Attitude Era environment. Now here's something that fans really were never meant to see. Whenever WWE does a steel cage match, the cage is already set up and lowered into the ring. This of course allows them to get the match started faster and looks a lot better. Well, mm -hmm. when WWE is off the air, they don't have to worry about all that. Instead of attaching the cage to the ceiling, WWE's production crew just brings out the individual parts of the steel cage and sets it up in the ring. WWE usually only does this for matches that aren't shown on TV and are intended for just the live audience. Oh. Some moments are so controversial that WWE oh, actively work. tries to prevent people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, we've we've seen the the infamous Mickey James uh, clip at WrestleMania, man. That was a <laughs> a very interesting one. Uh, but yeah, this was pretty cool, man. A lot of these I did not know. I, I didn't know that uh, Dean Ambrose at the time was potentially just going to be a solo act feuding with Mick Foley. That's a pretty interesting uh, tidbit. I did not know. So comment down below. Let me know which one of these, uh, I guess, information or uh, stories from this video did you guys not know about? Me, didn't know about the Dean Ambrose situation, so I thought that was pretty interesting. But I appreciate all the love and support you guys have been showing on the channel. Road to 100K. Appreciate y'all kicking with me. See y'all next one. Peace.